Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to the finale of LEGO Awards 2023, the show where I count down the best of the best that LEGO had to offer this year in 2023. Now this has been a pretty crazy series. We started off by taking a look at the licensed and non-licensed minifigures of the year, then worked our way up the price thresholds of the best $20 sets, best 20 to 50, best 50 to 100, and then best over 100 license sets, all culminating in this final video summarizing the top 10 best over $100 non-licensed sets of 2023. Now, I am a big fan of LEGO doing original IPs, Bionicle, Ninjago, Monkey Kid. Those are sometimes the most creative sets that LEGO comes up with because they are basically coming up with their own ideas for these sets themselves. And so, non-licensed LEGO sets really have a special place in my heart, which is why I wanted to focus an entire finale video of LEGO Awards to do this, and I am so happy and excited to now jump into it, and I'm so curious to see if you agree or disagree as well. And so, let's jump right in to number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have an entry from LEGO Friends, and this is not the only LEGO Friends entry on this list, because Friends as a theme has been absolutely killing it this year. I feel like every single LEGO Friends set is one of the best, which is why it was so hard to narrow this down, but at number 10, we have set number 41737, The Beach Amusement Park, retailing for $120. The thing that impresses me the most about the set is that this is truly a feat of engineering, and while it might not seem like that at first glance, when you turn one single knob at the back of the set, the set literally comes alive. There is a series of interconnected, smoothly geared up mechanisms, a surfer going alongside a wakeboarder machine. You have an arcade machine with waves sliding back and forth, and a moving pirate ship sign up at the top swaying back and forth in the waves. And at the centerpiece of the set, you have a massive amusement park ride featuring all sorts of different sea creatures whirling and spinning across two different axes of motion. This is easily one of the most impressive mechanisms I have ever seen in a single LEGO set, and the coolest thing is that on the back of the box, it shows you the internal mechanics of how all of this is connected. Making geared mechanisms work seamlessly like this is harder than it looks, and being on LEGO Masters, trying to integrate something like this would have been an absolute nightmare. Believe me, I tried many times. So the fact that it is done so seamlessly, so effortlessly in this set, makes it one of the most impressively technical designed LEGO sets of the entire year, and a set that I feel really deserves its spot on the list. For being only $120, it is the cheapest item we have on this list, and there definitely are larger and arguably more impressive sets on the list, but this I feel like is genuinely a feat of engineering how they managed to pull it off. I was blown away by how the different mechanisms all worked in congruence with each other, it was just so impressive to me, and that's why I feel like this set deserved the number 10 spot on this list. But now, let's move on to number 9. Coming in at number 9, my pick was the LEGO Ideas Viking Village. Set number 21343, it retails for $130 and marks the triumphant return of LEGO Vikings to LEGO's product portfolio. Now this I definitely am a little biased because I love nostalgic remakes of older LEGO themes, and while this is more of a standalone thing, it isn't necessarily something that we saw from LEGO in the past, this to me feels like a great return to form for the LEGO Vikings theme, one of my favorite themes growing up as a kid. Now the village itself is really intricately done. It feels very remote and isolated, and it really captures that Nordic feel, while also feeling very warm and inviting and cozy, especially with the main hall, being integrated with all sorts of unique minifigures with specialized new leg printings, shield printings, and all, this is a really fantastically detailed set, and I love all the easter eggs they managed to scatter into the original Vikings theme as well. To me, this set is a really great one because it encapsulates everything you would want out of a Viking village. You have an outpost lookout, a swaying bridge, rattling in the wind, and of course, a great hall for the king of the Vikings or queen of the Vikings to sit down and address all of their subjects. It is just a really solid set overall, and I really do feel like LEGO just really hit the nail on its head when it came to the design aesthetics of this particular LEGO build. Now, not everything is fully perfect. I definitely feel that for $100, I don't know quite 
quite how to put my finger on it, but something is missing. Maybe that was more minifigures, maybe that was an accompanying side longbow, just a mini one, but it is still a really nice build. I really love the way they were able to pull it off as a LEGO idea set. And overall, massive kudos to the fan designer for bringing this to life in conjunction with the LEGO Ideas team. I am a big fan of how they were able to make this work and how the aesthetics of the set function, and it is really, really cool to get a Viking village from LEGO in 2023. But now let's move on to number 8. Coming in at number 8 on this list is the new modular museum of natural history, set number 10326, which surprises me that it actually even is on this list, because this is technically supposed to be the 2024 modular, but LEGO, for whatever reason, decided to release it early this year on December 1st, and I'm guessing the modular launch time is going to switch over to December 1st, so this has been the first year with two standard modular buildings. Now this admittedly may be a bit of a controversial choice and honestly, I went back and forth on including this or the Jazz Club on the list, which is another phenomenal modular, but in the end, I did decide to go with this one, and again, it could be recency bias, but this set really grew on me after I actually got a chance to physically build it. I saw it in person for LEGO Fan Media Days in September, and there I was really impressed by the overall composition of it, and just how much was going on throughout the inside of the model, and I know there's been a lot of controversy around the color scheme, lots of people don't like the olive green, but for me having it in hand, I actually kind of like how it is a unique color compared to a lot of the other modular buildings. I believe only one other one, the Parisian restaurant, really did use some olive green in the color scheme, so this is actually a really interesting color to be used for the buildings themselves, and it always is nice to get them in different colors, and to me the modular museum is something we've been wanting for so long. It is one of the largest modulars ever on one and a half base plates, which is really impressive and all of that space is dedicated to one massive monolithic building, which some might see as a con, but for me, feels like it is really deserved because for a museum, you really need something massive like this. For me, the thing that drew me in about the museum is how the outward architecture, like the actual way the windows are done, the large Corinthian pillars, as well as the nice detailing on the top, plus the dark gray roof, really felt like a real museum to me. It felt like the museums I've been to in real life, and that was a huge draw drawing point of the set. I personally love going to museums, I just love to visit them, and seeing museums is one of my favorite things to do, so I definitely am biased here, but this was a really fun set to put together and really just be able to admire all the different exhibits on the inside, and I appreciate how consistent it is even across the back of the building, where there aren't any weird pieces in different colors, everything does feel really nice and well put together. Of course, 50% of every modular building is what you can do on the inside, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the roof here so we can actually take a look at the inside of the model itself. On the inside, one of my favorite things is that you can actually see to the bottom, even the head of the Brachiosaurus is poking up and perfectly oriented with the banner as well for going back in time, which is very, very cool. And overall, the exhibits are dedicated to natural history, but specifically towards a big split between space and dinosaurs. There are, however, some other exhibits like these incredible little micro builds of classic Lego sets, which is really nice. There's an Ori right there, which is cool because I built one for Lego Masters. There's a little bit of a space dedicated for the Galaxy Explorer for space, some asteroids, and of course, a classic space-esque logo showcasing a very miniature version of the world map. Going down to the bottom floor, you can see there's a lot more details, including a little miniature gift shop on the main floor. There even is a removable wall where you can see some extra details for the actual curators planning and exhibits there with a lab for research. And of course, that skeleton is looking really good, and I love all the different artifacts all across the different walls, this one related to minerals, rocks, and geology, which makes sense because it is the ground floor of the museum. For a LEGO museum, this is maybe not necessarily what people were looking for, but I feel like it is a really nice looking museum, it has a lot of playability to it, and it is easily one of my favorite modular buildings just because it is a museum that has been something I, as well as many, many other people, have been wanting for a very, very long time, and it just comes together very nicely. The building is fully symmetric, it just feels very clean in its presentation. What's not to like about it other than the color scheme, which is definitely up to personal preference, 
Overall though, I am a fan of the way that this building came together and even the roof is done remarkably well, with an overhead skylight that really is reminiscent of a lot of museums and a center building that is meant to be an office for the curator himself, who is actually a reference to LEGO Adventures in the form of Dr. Kilroy, Johnny Thunder's companion who you can see at the front there. Overall, for $300, I feel like this is a very solid LEGO modular building. It will probably last for a very long time, and because of that, I felt like it deserved a place on this list. But again, this is just my opinion. But now, let's move on to number 7. And for my number 7 pick, we have an entry from the LEGO Monkey Kid theme. This is set number 80049, The Dragon of the East Palace, which retails for $190. US dollars. This is a Journey to the West styled set, which means it isn't necessarily focused on any events from the LEGO Monkey Kid TV show, but instead depicts major events from the Journey to the West series, which makes total sense for LEGO to do them as folklore based sets. Now, my favorite thing about this set is that it feels like a true under underwater kingdom, and one of the most intricate underwater palaces we have ever gotten from LEGO. Even with Ninjago Seabound, we never got something quite as intricate as this, and my favorite feature of the set is that you can actually split it completely open to view the inside, which we're going to take a look at in a second. Now this set is jam-packed full of different types of underwater details, from little bits and pieces of opalescent elements like the new Lord of the Rings fern leaf piece being used, to just different colors of fish being integrated all around, this truly feels like a lived-in underwater palace and that is easily the most impressive thing about the building to me. Honestly, I kind of feel like this building blows away a lot of other temples we have gotten from LEGO in the past, particularly for both Monkey Kid and Ninjago as well, and I love how you can even even see the sea serpent poking out of the top there for the dragon itself, which is just such a good integration of a creature into a set like this. The color scheme is absolutely fantastic. Dark blue, sand green, gold, the transparent opalescent blue, and standard blue and white just makes for a really ornate and intricate color scheme, and I just love how detailed the interior is, with little places to drink tea and for the king to preside his court. It is a really simple sliding lane mechanism to allow this to actually open up, but it works very, very well, and I'm honestly impressed by just how many scenes they were able to factor in, including the massive LEGO Monkey King staff sticking right out of the very top, which yes, you can remove and wield on its own. Altogether, this is a truly remarkable set with a phenomenal minifigure selection, with a number of minifigures with unique head molds created specifically for the set itself. This is giving me LEGO Atlantis vibes, LEGO Aqua Raiders vibes, and AquaZone vibes, and those are always very, very good vibes to have. And overall, for $190, I truly feel like this is a really well-priced entry on this list. But now let's move on to number 6. Moving into number 6, I have chosen a LEGO City set, surprisingly, because LEGO City typically has more juniorized sets that are a little bit more smaller scale, not the most impressive builds, but somehow, LEGO City has taken on a whole new identity this year, where much like LEGO Friends, City has honestly really revamped itself and become one of LEGO's strongest product portfolios. And all of that is exemplified in set number 60380, Downtown. Very simple name of a set, and it is very simple because it works well. Retailing for $200, this integrates the road plate system into a fully modular, massive downtown city shopping street. And I feel like this is the best example of the LEGO City modular system at work. What's really cool is that you can actually use the LEGO City modular system in conjunction with the other modular systems of Monkey Kid and even LEGO Creator and Friends buildings, but it really is its own type of building, and I just love the layout of the set itself. There is a sky bridge going over a road that pedestrians can walk across, there are all sorts of different shops from a barber shop to a veterinarian shop to a streamer studio to a dance party being held on the roof of an apartment building to a hotel to a comic book store store, this is jam-packed and honestly truly feels like LEGO City's answer to something like Ninjago City, where you just have so many different unique styles of builds and so many different styles of building techniques and color schemes all spread together. Now some might argue that it is a little bit cluttered, and I definitely can see that argument being made, but honestly I feel like this actually does pull itself together in a really nice and remarkable configuration, and my favorite part about it is that everything is fully modular. 
Yes, you heard that right. You can completely disassemble it and rebuild it into a completely different style of building, which is one of my favorite things about the set as a whole, in that not only is it modular with other LEGO City buildings that came out for this wave, but it's modular internally with itself, and you can get a completely different style of city building by just shifting around the way the buildings are done. Overall, I am a huge fan of the way that this LEGO City set was done. It is easily my favorite LEGO City set ever made. I think it definitely is the best LEGO City set ever. Maybe that's a hot take, but I think it is the best one. And for $200, it actually feels like pretty good value, especially given the copious amounts of road plates included in the set as well. But now let's move on to number five. My number 5 pick is a set that admittedly some could argue maybe shouldn't be on this list, but given that it is an official LEGO set that you can actually buy from BrickLink and you can see it on BrickSet, I figured it counted because this is set number 910002, Studgate Train Station, retailing for 400 US dollars. If you don't recognize this set, well, it's probably because this set was only available for purchase for about a day, not even a day, for about a few hours as a pre-order a couple of years ago, but only came out this year, which is why it is officially a 2023 set, and this was part of the BrickLink A Full Designer program, a line of crowdfunded sets that were produced by LEGO through BrickLink as official LEGO sets that people had to essentially buy to crowdfund and then wait a year or two to actually get them shipped to them. Now this to me is easily the best LEGO train station ever and there's no question about it and it's almost unfair to compare this alongside any other LEGO building because this is clearly a mock, right? This is not an official LEGO set style of build and while it is an official LEGO set, it is very clearly something that somebody would make as a mock, which is there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like this definitely does have a lot of building techniques that LEGO designers probably would not use in a standard set just because of either how repetitive they are or how flimsy they are, but overall, I feel like when all is said and done, aesthetically speaking, this is an incredibly strong set. This reminds me of the kinds of train stations that I love to visit in Europe and especially around Germany and Switzerland, you'll see train stations like like this, and maybe it's because of that nostalgia, because of that core memory of traveling, but this to me is one of the strongest LEGO sets ever. I especially love the minifigure I view as you go in and look up at the building, it truly feels like you are inside a massive train station building, and the trains themselves are pretty good as well. Nothing super crazy going on with the building techniques, but they're really nice and solid. But of course, the focus is on the Studgate train station itself. When I saw this was being made as a LEGO set, I was completely shocked because it is a very out there concept for LEGO to do as such a large and expensive set, but clearly Clearly there was enough demand for it, and despite it being $400, I feel like that price is remarkably fair for this. And on the aftermarket, if you want a copy, well, be prepared to spend close to six or $700, because this went by fast. But now let's move on to number four. My number four pick is thankfully a standard retail set, and we return to LEGO Friends. This is set number 41732, Downtown Flower and Design Stores, retailing for 160 US dollars. Now this was the flagship set that triumphantly announced the reboot of LEGO Friends this year in January of 2023, and oh my goodness, is it a beautiful set. Not only is this modular with other LEGO Friends buildings, but it is simply a beautiful city street. The Unity Street features a furniture store with very unique angles being integrated into the store itself, as well as a more traditional style of architecture for a flower store and an apartment complex at the very top of the flower store itself. In the middle is a nice community area for people to gather and share a meal, there's a nice fountain in the center, and overall, this set does really tell a story as well, because you can literally take pieces of furniture that you like from the furniture store and for the low cost of only a single $100 Lego 2x1 bill, you can move them into your own Lego house in the apartment, which is a really fun play pattern to be integrated into the set itself. Overall, I feel like this is truly emblematic of the brand new design motif and design aesthetics that the LEGO Friends team really tried to invest into for this year by having a contrast of different colors but making it still very realistic. You have blacks and dark purples being used for the furniture store, something that you don't typically see for LEGO Friends. But then you have greens and keyed orange, flame yellowish orange, and the light yellow, cool yellow being used for the other building on the side, and that feels more akin to something you would 
consistency in Friends, but the building techniques are more refined, it feels more realistic, it is honestly better than any other city set or city building we've ever gotten. It almost feels like a step towards a modular building, which is really impressive, and altogether, all of those factors make this one of the best sets of the year, especially with a phenomenal price of only $160 for getting so much with the set itself. Overall, I'm a huge fan of this LEGO friend set. It is one of my favorite LEGO friend sets they've ever done. Maybe only usurped by the Botanical Gardens, which appeared in the previous list we did earlier, but this is just a beautiful city street, and I hope that friends will continue to do more city streets like this. Imagine an entire long street full of buildings like this, all modular and interactive and connected to each other. That would be a dream come true. But now let's move on to our top three best non-licensed sets of 2023. For number 3, I have a set from the brand new LEGO original theme, LEGO Dreams. This is set number 71469, The Nightmare Shark Ship, retailing for 140 US dollars. Now this to me is the best LEGO Dream set, and again, maybe I might be a little bit partial because I love sets that are focused on villains, I love unique aesthetics for sets, and I love it when LEGO does something outside the norm, and this is really an example of all of that. Now the core competence of LEGO Dreams is that you can rebuild your sets into different builds, and for this set you can change it into a four-wheel off-roader, but really the main build is the Nightmare Shark Ship itself, so that's what we're going to be focusing on in this showcase. Now the Shark Ship itself is a massive skeleton shark with a pirate boat mounted on the top of it with massive jet engines on the sides of it. It is just such a cool model, and I love the aggressive aesthetics of the model itself. The color scheme is also really solid. You have a ribcage exposing some of the flesh underneath, with the coral color used to simulate flesh, but then of course you have the bone on the outside of the skeleton itself, and on the upper ship you mostly have sand blue and dark grey showcasing that it is a ship sitting on top of a giant shark. This is such a creative, vicious, and menacing design, and there's so much that you can do inside the vehicle itself, from trap civilian to man the crew quarters, to have the Nightmare King pilot the ship itself, this is just truly a very rewarding and fun set to play around with for the LEGO Dreams line. And I'm actually really happy with the price as well. Having the price be $140 feels pretty fair for a set this large and this playable, and this set just looks absolutely fantastic on a shelf no matter where you put it. Overall, I feel like this is one of the strongest LEGO Dream sets yet, and I cannot wait to see what Dreams is cooking up next year for their villain factions, because if this is anything to go by, we are certainly in for a treat. But now let's move on to number two. Number two on this list is the remarkable LEGO Pirates El Dorado Fortress. Set number 10320 retails for 215 US dollars, and this is a direct remake of the original El Dorado Fortress, one of my favorite classic LEGO Pirate sets, and for good reason. Now for this set, I was honestly just absolutely blown away by just how far LEGO has come in the years between the original set being released and them doing a full-on remake. From an incredible side build of the boat to the fully brick-built base of the set itself, this set really is honestly very impressive by just how detailed they were able to make it by capturing the look and feel of original large molded base plates and broken apart rock work, but this set honestly would not have even been this high on the list until you actually get a chance to see its secret, because this set is modular, where every single component can be broken up and reconfigured into a different space. Yes, as you can probably tell by this video, I love modular LEGO sets. I love it when LEGO makes sets be able to be reconfigured in different ways. I feel like that is such a creative use of the LEGO system. One of my very first LEGO sets was an honestly pretty poor LEGO Life on Mars shuttle, but I loved it because it was modular and you could reconfigure it into different spaceships in just the same set. And overall, I feel like this is truly a triumph and really indicative of the benefits of having a non-molded base plate. Molded base plates are beautiful. I love them. Everyone loves molded base plates. But seeing this is truly phenomenal because you can just see the amount of effort that went into designing the set to make it be fully configuratable but also allow you to completely move all different chunks and parts of the set around. It is really a triumph by how accurate they were able to get this to the source material while still making it feel like its own set, and I just love the amount of detail packed into the set itself, from the rock work of the base, to the curvature of the boat itself and the sides, to the way that the bricks are almost breaking 
breaking away, revealing the dark red underside of the bricks themselves. Every single piece is intentionally placed in the set and just feels incredibly strong for the set itself. And overall, that is why this set is number two on my list of the top 10 best over $100 non-licensed sets. But I feel like there is still one set that tops even this one. And so, without further ado, let's move in to my number one favorite non-licensed over $100 LEGO set. And yeah, it's Ninjago City Markets. Could it be anything else? Set number 71799 is Ninjago City Markets retailing for 370 US dollars and it is without a doubt one of the best Lego Ninjago modular city buildings ever made. And this might be maybe a bit of a controversial opinion because people loved gardens and they loved the original city and to a lesser extent docks, but I feel like the overall composition of the set makes it one of the most unique and playable Lego sets pretty much ever. I love the fact that throughout the entire set you actually do have a working cable car that can go through the set itself making it incredibly fun to play around with. You can also play around with all of the interior details of the set itself. Of course it is jam packed full of easter eggs and references to other lego themes and overall it is really cool to be able to have so many different play features factored into a set this big and this impressive. Of course this is a continuation of the lego ninjago city series. One of the strongest lines of Lego yet, which factors in so many different intricate types of buildings and styles and designs. I really love the Ninjago City styles, but this is such a strong build because it is one of the largest ones yet, it has one of the largest footprints, and yes, it even has a working toilet and a working plumbing system, which is something I cannot say about any other Lego set. Jokes aside though, this genuinely is fully integrated and fully detailed. I love how you can see full interiors of all of the buildings, like Derrett's Laffy's Karaoke Club where you can see a little brick built pool table as well as a karaoke stage. I also love how you can see the inside of the Borg story, very iconic Ninjago location. Everything is full of detail, full of love in this city and this is just another incredible example of the Lego Ninjago designers going absolutely crazy with giving us one of the best Lego sets that we've ever gotten, honestly period. There's honestly not even much more I can say about the set without repeating stuff I've said in my original review of the set itself, and I would definitely recommend you check this out if you do want to see a full-on review of the set. I've gone very in-depth into it and also summarized all of the easter eggs you can find in the set itself, of which there are many, so do go check that out if you are interested. But overall, this is a really strong LEGO Ninjago set build. I love the fact that it includes so many recognizable buildings and minifigures and artifacts, but also is just simply fun to play with. with the cable car going across the city itself, it feels very authentic to what you would want to see in the actual Ninjago TV show, and that is really all I can ask for with a Ninjago City set like this. And so we have wrapped up my personal favorite LEGO set of 2023, this is it Ninjago City Markets. Alright, and with that we have summed up my top 10 favorite over $100 non-licensed sets of 2023. Let me know down in the comments below, do you agree, do you disagree, do you feel like any sets should have made the list but didn't quite make it because there were a ton of sets that came out this year and it was really really hard for me to pick just 10 favorites. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos that has brought us all the way to the end of the year. Thank you so so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.